This is the 2023 Maserati Grucale Modena because I got dragged through the mud for saying Modena. So welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Sparkplug TV. My name is Chris and I do car reviews for literally everybody, not just car enthusiasts. Before I begin, please don't forget to like this video, comment something down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video, which is whenever I can. Look at these quad exhausts. Oh, so cute. Yes, this is the mid-level Maserati Grecale Modena, and it comes in at a starting price of around $75,000 and it is up against the BMW X3, but more specifically, in my opinion, the Porsche Macan, I think, is probably its biggest competitor. I've done a video on this before, and you can go ahead and check it out right up in here if you haven't seen it. And before I get too deep into it, let's go ahead and thank today's sponsor, Johnson Maserati Alfa Romeo of Cary. Johnson Automotive is known for providing exceptional service to luxury clients, and Johnson Maserati Alfa Romeo of Cary is no exception. If you want an ownership experience indicative of these amazing Italian machines, Johnson is where you'll find it. So with a base price of around $64,000, the GT does come standard with a turbocharged inline four cylinder engine. This one, however, comes with the higher output inline four cylinder engine that makes about 323 pound feet of torque and 330 horsepower. All models do come with an all wheel drive drivetrain to start and finish. There's no other option. Uh, and yeah. Okay, hi, here we are in the Gurkale, and in my first video that I made on it, I did not realize that it does have a head-up display. Uh, the head-up display is at its brightest setting, and I cannot see it. I, like, I literally can't see it. You know, right off the bat as well, I can tell that the uh, air suspension icon is right there. Um, you can see the different drive modes right here. It does have active dampers as well in the suspension, so you are able to turn it from a comfort mode into a sport mode, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and then on the touchscreen right here, some things that I've already noticed out the gate as well with the touchscreen is that it's a little laggy. I mean, maybe it needs a little bit of an update, but when I get to like my car and stuff, like it just, it just seems to be a little laggy. I do, I do like this animation though. It does show the different power that is happening throughout like the, the mild hybrid and the engine and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to leave it on the performance technical gauges though. But I mean, like if I were to go, see like how I click on consumption history and it kind of lags a little bit. Of course now it's like, up oh, there it goes. See, consumption history is taking a second. Maybe it just takes a second to load the data. That's probably why, to be honest, if I had to guess. But I mean, it just it just takes a second. Or you have to click on the above arrow. I don't know. It's just it's a little it's a little needs a little work. So let's go ahead and click it into sport mode. Um, you can see there that it changed into sport mode. And I don't know if you can see on the gauge cluster, but it is achieving the Aero 1 ride height. Now I am also going to turn it on to the sport suspension. And look at how big these paddle shifters are. I mean, they take up the entirety. I mean, they definitely feel like high quality though, I will say that. So in order to put it into manual mode, you press the drive button again. This is the gear selector. Took me a second to figure out where it was. I was like, hello, where is this gear selector, mom? Okay. So it definitely doesn't have that like quintessential V8 Ferrari grumble that we're typically used to in Maserati, but it doesn't completely let you down with the rev notes. Bit of turbo lag. All right, so I do have it in sport suspension mode for the active dampers and it is a little bouncy but of course it is you know in the sport setting in terms of handling so far so good i mean it doesn't even feel like i'm going that fast so i'm going to take it out of the sport setting and then we're going to go into comfort mode 
the steering feels just as responsive as it did in sport mode. You know, there's a good bit of tire noise. I'm a little dismayed at the tire noise, but not a lick of wind noise. You know, even though it does have turbo lag, it is still pretty peppy. Impressive. The handling is quite impressive. I think another small complaint that I have about this steering wheel is that there is so much going on between the ginormous paddle shifters, these two stocks in the back, and then the radio controls are on the actual steering wheel itself, which is very Stellantis. And then you've got all these driver facing buttons right here. It's just a lot going on on the steering wheel. Now I have gotten used to it already, but it, I, I will say that it is a little um, distracting up front. But so far from what I can tell with the safety systems is that, you know, it doesn't have much of the augmented reality kind of systems that we've come to expect, expect in these modern cars, at least in the head up display. But you can change it on the gauge cluster. So the gauge cluster does actually show you where you are in the lanes. And then it will, sh it will highlight the lane itself. If you have, don't have the active lane management on, it will de-highlight it. But then if you turn it on, it will highlight it again. So to wrap this video, I would probably say that in terms of performance, I think it is actually pretty comparable to the Macan. I have driven a Macan. I drove the, I think I drove the four cylinder Macan. This has a similar, if not comparable, suspension, uh, you know, active dampers, air suspension. I mean, it's got all of the prominent features that you want in a, you know, daily compact sport racer spicy Durango. <laughs> There's definitely some Stellantis hidden Easter eggs in here, but it is very much becoming its own IP, uh, Maserati is. I think that for a long time, Maserati has been like, oh, it's a Maserati, but it's got like light switches from a, a Dodge Journey, you know? But this is finally like bespoke Maserati. It's nice. You know, I mean, by and large, like, I really do enjoy how this drives. Um, the, the only problem, I think, is that it is at a much higher starting price than a lot of its competitors. Now, I know that the Macan is probably comparable to this starting price, um, but I also know that the X3 does not start nearly as high as this. Um, and you do get an inline four cylinder engine with the X3. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head what those output numbers are, but I think that like for the fact that they're finally putting some skin in the game in the compact segment, I think this is a great start. I do think that it does need some technological um, tweaks, like with the charging pad, you know, the, the little bit of the laggy on the, the infotainment system, but the gauge cluster is out of all of the screens in here, including the clock, the gauge cluster is where it is at. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all the things. Thank you to Johnson Maserati Alfa Romeo of Kerry for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye Hey Sparks, thanks for watching today's video. Do you want more Sparkplug TV content? Then you can choose one of these three options right over here. The middle button is to subscribe to my channel, so please do that. Right over here. These three. I can't see them in real life, but they're right here. <laughs>